What would you do if you found out something you cherished was possessed? Would you try and throw it away? Destroy it? Maybe sell it to some unsuspecting buyer? And how did it become haunted in the first place? Those are the questions we're going to ask as we explore those very objects. Some you might be familiar with, others so obscure that they've been lost to the sands of time until now. I'm your host, Evan O'Hare. Welcome to Haunted Objects. Today we're going to take a look at one of the most famous cars in Hollywood. So before you buy that trinket at a garage sale or accept that family inheritance, take a look at these haunted objects and decide for yourself if you believe. <sighs> the first of our three haunted objects is a car, but not just any car. Nope, it's the Porsche 550 Spider, affectionately known as Little Bastard. This custom-built speeding bullet would eventually claim its proud owner's life just one week after his close friend Alec Guinness ominously warned, if you get in that car, you shall be found dead in it by this time next week. And he was. On that faithful Friday afternoon, actor James Dean, his passenger Porsche mechanic Rolf Udrich, and stuntman Bill Hickman embarked on a journey to Salinas for a race. This simple trip from LA to the Bay Area started out with a foreboding warning as the speeding convoy were chased down and pulled over by the Bakersfield police. The officer issued the assailant speeding tickets, and for most people, this might be enough to calm the thirst for speed. But soon enough, Dean and his buddies were on their way to a road paved in blood. Having not heeded the warning signs of their earlier encounter, Dean and Hickman took the notorious shortcut to Salinas, called Racer's Road, frequented by race car drivers to avoid Bakersfield's 25 mile an hour speed limit. Continuing down the State Road 166, they opened up the engines and roared through the desolate highway, eventually finding themselves right outside Colma, California. As terrible fate would have it, at this very same moment, a young man about the same age as Dean, Donald Turnipseed, driving a Ford Tudor, was making a left-hand turn into the empty highway. Dean warned yet again, this time by his mechanic, Rolf Utrecht, to slow down. Dean responded, that guy's gotta stop, he'll see us. And at 5.59 p.m., Little Bastard smashed almost head-on into the Ford Tudor. Rolf Utrecht thrown from the car, the Porsche mangled, and Dean was dead. And Donald turnip seed with hardly a scratch on him. Despite being declared a total loss by the insurance company, the car was sold and would continue to cause carnage wherever it went, or even parts of it went. Dr. William Eschrich bought the Porsche from a salvage yard in Burbank and proceeded to strip it down from parts. Eschrich himself installed the Porsche's engine into his Lotus 9 race car. He then loaned the transmission and suspension parts to a fellow doctor and racer, Troy McHenry. The darkness of Little Bastard overshadowed the 1956 Pomona race as both Eschrich and McHenry crashed. Eschrich survived the serious injuries, but McHenry wasn't as lucky. He hit a tree and was killed instantly. And so the curse of the little bastard gained momentum. Soon after, notorious publicity manager, King of Customs, George Barris, bought the mangled spider, promising to rebuild it. However, Barris soon discovered there was little integrity left to the car's frame, and instead the car sat in storage. While in its seemingly short-lived resting place, little bastard mysteriously caught fire. The fire melted two of the tires and blackened the paint, but oddly, the fire didn't spread to the other vehicles in the storage alongside the spider. Barris sold the two remaining tires, which led to more mayhem. 
Both tires reportedly blew at the same time, causing the driver to careen off the road. Barris, sensing the danger that surrounded the car might not be over, decided to keep it from the public eye. While hidden away, two thieves attempted to steal parts off the car, one of them suffering major injuries, slicing his arm open while trying to remove the steering wheel. Soon after, Barris was convinced by the California Highway Patrol to loan it to the Los Angeles chapter of the National Safety Council to display the vehicle as a vehicle safety exhibit. But before the car would tour the car shows, cinemas, and bowling alleys, it was once again the center of a fire. The warehouse it was being held before the first exhibit caught fire and burned to the ground. Remarkably, the 550 Spider was untouched. The next tragedy we would hear from the Porsche was at a Sacramento high school exhibit where the car's display mount failed and the spider fell and landed on a student, breaking his hip. During the transportation, the killer struck again, crushing the truck driver, killing him instantly. And what was the final nail in the coffin for nearly 60 years? Is that the Porsche is said to have vanished from a sealed boxcar while en route from Miami to Los Angeles during its exhibit tour. Some say that Barris, ever the showman, fabricated that story as a way of keeping the car's mystique alive, whilst others wonder if the spider's reign of terror had finally come to a close, and whatever entity possessed the remnants now laid to rest. We did see one lead after a million dollar reward for information was offered in 2005, when a man stepped forward claiming his father, a mechanic by trade, had stolen the spider and encapsulated it in a wall. The thief had now passed away. However, when the man was refused the reward money, he, in turn, refused to show the whereabouts of the car. With Barris himself and this potential mechanic car thief now gone, the true end of Little Bastard's haunting story may never be revealed. More than half a century after his death in 1955, at the age of 24, Dean still remains a subject of inexhaustible fascination. But what did become of the spider? June 2021, the year that sent us back in time, also brought us a shocking listing. A four-speed transaxle appeared at auction. Official documents verified it to be an original piece of the car and naturally was sold for an eye-watering $382,000. In a year full of insanity, what could be more surprising than this relic rematerializing out of seemingly thin air? All these years later, the identity of the winning bidder turns out to be, unsurprisingly, Mr. Zach Baggins, owner of the Haunted Museum in Las Vegas. I imagine it won't be long before we see the spider back on a gruesome rampage. But what of this tale of haunted objects? Do you believe a car could be evil to the very core? That every piece of it lusts for tragedy? Or is this a simple case of public grief, manipulative showmanship, and sheer coincidence? Whether the cursed objects shown this evening are of myth, urban legend, or fantastical paranormal, occurrences is for you to decide. I hope I haven't left you eyeballing your shelves and contemplating your latest thrift shop purchase. But if I did, get in touch. Tell us about your possessed possession and maybe we'll feature it right here on Haunted Objects. Thank you for listening to Haunted Objects, brought to you by Resurrection Films, hosted by Evan O'Hare, and produced by Shawnee Elise Cook, directed and edited by Jason D. Morris, written by Carly Street, Mark Francisco, and Jason D. Morris, co-produced by Troy L. Foreman and Jason Hewlett, executive produced by Resurrection Films and Berg Garabedian. Haunted Objects was originally aired on the Paranormal Network for Joe Blow Media Inc. <laughs>